and welcome to Night Hunter Books. It's been a while since we did our last wrap up, so we've had to split it into two. So today you will be treated to books that we read both in July and in August, but we've split this video out so that it's all things that are novella length or shorter. A lot of these were nominated for the Hugo Awards, which is kind of why we picked them up, so a lot of them we've both read. Any of them that are freely available online, we will put a link down below so that you can follow and read it yourself if you're intrigued. On that note, the first uh, book is Children of Thorns, Children of Water by Aliette de Bodard, followed closely along by Extracurricular Activities by Yoon Ha Lee. These are both uh, novelettes that fit within existing series. Uh, that's Fallen Paris by Aliette de Bodard and Machineries of Empire by Yoon Ha Lee. Honestly, I'm not going to say too much about these. Um, if you enjoy the ongoing series, then I would recommend checking them out. Um, particularly the um, extracurricular activities, which is kind of fun because it, it's very different in tone to the main sequence, being sort of a, a comedy story set during a spy caper, um, focused entirely on Jadao. So if you can't get enough of him in the main sequence, then this is your opportunity. Whereas the uh, de Baudard explores the world built in the first book from another angle. What does one of the houses of Fallen Paris look like to an outsider? I did read extracurricular activities before reading any of the series it's attached to. And it did make sense. But having read Nine Fox Gambit, I now want to go back and read it. So definitely worth waiting, I think. Next is Small Changes Over Long Periods of Time by K.M. Sparrow, which follows a gay trans guy as he gets turned by a vampire who he then becomes uh, romantically, uh, sexually entangled with. What makes this book really different is the perspective that main character has of transitioning as a vampire after transitioning in gender. And also the world building's quite interesting in that it very much vampires are out. It's basically a way to become immortal which means that it's controlled by the rich and powerful who generally make it easier for people like them to upgrade. For me there was a little too much erotica, that's not really my thing, um, but I'm sure there are plenty of people for whom there is not enough trans vampire erotica out there. Next up is actually the story that won the Hugo for Novelettes, it's The Secret Life of Bots by Suzanne Palmer, which is an incredibly cute story following a tiny little robot on a spaceship who um, is tasked with a sort of minor maintenance mission because there is nobody else to do the job. Um, he is their last resort. Um, he's been in storage for quite a long time. We get to see this uh, cute robot interact with uh, their fellow robots um, and find out more about what the spaceship is doing and what it can do to help. Lots of nice messages about you know, teamwork and innovation and unlikely heroes. And as Thomas from SFF180 says, um, if Pixar are looking for something to adapt, I think this would be a, a definite. The next one is the one that I voted top of this category, A Series of Stakes by Veena Jimin Prasad which follows a artistically gifted main character who has somehow got themselves into the business of meat forgery, which seems to be going okay for them until someone blackmails them into a particularly tricky order um, using some secret from their past. This isn't all bad though, because it requires them to take on an assistant. And that, that for me was the bit that I really loved about this story was the relationship between the two girls. The assistant is maybe a little bit of an over-the-top kind of character. I have heard Manic Pixie Dream Girl kind of thrown around them, um, but I just found uh, it was just lovely um, and just made me laugh a lot. And the world just seemed quite plausible as well. And to be honest, whilst Manic Pixie Dream Girls are, you know, a recognisable trope, it's not often you see them in female friendships. Next up is Wind Will Rove by Sarah Pinska. This follows the inhabitants of a colony ship. We follow this ship after a particularly 
idiotic engineer sabotages a piece of equipment. Not as you might expect the air recycling or the uh, cryostasis. He sabotages the cultural database. And what we see is the crew of the ship as the crew changes over time and gets further from uh, memories of Earth and what they decide to preserve and what they're capable of preserving of Earth culture um, and what they uh, choose to forget. It's a fascinating way of looking at colony ships that I've not seen done elsewhere. Now into the Hugo novella category, uh, another one by Sarah Pinkser, and then there were N minus one. In this story, then Sarah Pinkser gets invited to a conference run by Sarah Pinkser to invite all of the Sarah Pinksers of the multiverse to come together and I don't know, learn a bit about each other, enjoy a bit of meta-ness. Uh, this is just a lot of fun. Um, as probably most of you would guess from the title, this does go a bit untoward when one of the Sarah Pinksers is murdered and the protagonist, Sarah Pinkser, is called upon to investigate. Because of her vast criminal uh, background, as an insurance investigator. So yeah. The, she's the nearest thing to a cop they've got. It was quite interesting. Um, there is a lot of play on kind of the different routes that people can take. And it's like, oh, well, actually, there's a lot of Sarah Pinksers who've like gone into this field or that field or live here, live there. One what would have them... happened if you stayed with your ex? Or One of them is a Nebula Award winning writer. Yeah. I hope that becomes the future. I really enjoyed this story and it's just the sort of thing that works best in a short and I haven't seen before. Next up is River of Teeth by Sarah Gailey, which is an alternate history uh, set in an America where hippos were imported to be livestock. This is a very much uh, Western in tone. It follows very much a heist type story with the uh, the crew being pulled together for the job, which is right at the end. Um, though, uh, as the protagonist is fond of reminding everybody, they aren't pulling a con. This is a legitimate job for the government. They're just not doing it quite the way the government expected. Um, and things go a little wrong. As always. The story does spend quite a lot of time introducing the cast of characters, which I think are quite memorable. Although I remember thinking their motivations didn't make much sense to me at the time. Maybe there's only so much you can do with a novella that's meant to be hijinks. But they are quite a diverse set, uh, including a possibly agender character. I think the story overall was a little far from what I like. I could imagine watching it on Netflix with a beer. Mm but I'm not sure I necessarily want to read anymore. Yeah. Although it was very atmospheric. It was just the wrong atmosphere. I also then read a couple of other books for the Hugo Award. Down Among the Sticks and Bones by Shauna Maguire was nominated, but it's the second in a series. So I found time to read the first one, which I'd never quite got around to in Every Heart a Doorway. I really loved these. Um, Every Heart a Doorway follows the new girl at a boarding school for kids who've been on portal fantasy adventures and have come back not quite able to fit in with society. I really love the characters in this, although I think I found the plot a little unbelievable in places. But you know, it is kind of fairy tale fantasy. And there were some really fun things that Seanan did with actually working out how groups of kids who'd all been on adventures would come up with a common language to explain what they'd been through and what their worlds were like. I actually... Actually thinking about it, they should really be used and expanded for talking about genre. Yes. I quite like that idea. <laughs> yeah, high logic, high nonsense. I actually prefer Down Among the Sticks and Bones that just feel like a tighter story. It actually follows uh, two characters from the first book and kind of dives back into what their adventure was. Jack and Jill went to a fancy world called the Moors, which is a little dark where they apprentice to the vampire overlord and the mad scientist. It is really very good and totally hit all the kind of 
nostalgic parts of my brain, but with enough originality to make it different. Actually, the third book is my favourite, so see how you get on with that. I will hopefully get to it too. Moving away from Hugo-nominated works now, um, next up is The Lost Child of Lichford by Paul Cornell, which is the second book in his ongoing series following the adventures of a trio of witches in Middle England. Um, in a small town on, I think, the edge of Swindon. I didn't get on with this one quite as well as I did with the first. It doesn't get the sort of the same degree of sort of novelty points for the uh, suburban English witch uh, uh, setup, which is still fun, and also the story seems to have veered slightly horrorwards. There's still. Um, protecting the boundaries of all that is good and Euclidean um, from things that are not. Um, but as I say, the, the story has more of a horror vibe to it. And um, I'd be interested to know if anybody's read them, whether that's sort of an ongoing trend. I feel like this is one where we maybe should have paid more attention to the cover, because I think the cover is all kind of fog and gates and... Yes, true, <laughs> now that you mention it. <laughs> The final short thing that I read this month was the first in the Bitch Planet series, Extraordinary Machine, by Kelly Sue DeConnick and Valentine Delandra and others, which follows some convicts on a prison planet in a hopefully highly dystopian setting of patriarchal power. It's quite zany or kind of over the top. Um, in many ways, uh, including being quite violent, uh, with quite a lot of nudity. Um, I found the tone just a little weird there. Felt maybe a little lighthearted to match with that for me. The convicts form a team to compete in a kind of violent sports competition for their chance at getting free. Not really a sports person myself. Uh, so while there were some kind of little, I think, backstories especially that I really liked in this, I wasn't overly enthused about the way the story was going. So definitely let me know if this kind of stays on the sports route. Uh, I'm slightly worried that it just doesn't feel like there's enough hope for such a dark setting. Um, if on the other hand it goes down the prison break and revolution route. Yeah, then I'm much more interested. This might be a book that I'd have enjoyed a lot more had the political climate seemed more hopeful on the outside. I think I might be veering more towards hope fic rather than dark fic at the moment. Next up is High Fantasy, volume four in the ongoing Rat Queen series by Curtis Weber and Owen Jenny, which continues to be good fun. Uh, this features um, either quite a few guest artists or some really quite impressively uh, varied artwork um, as at uh, various points the uh, characters all go through uh, flashbacks in uh, art styles reminiscent apparently of their brain. This uh, has themes of family and uh, you know, what it means to uh, be around family and sometimes apparently that's murderous rage which I'm sure some people can identify with. Probably still going to uh, follow along with this. So those are all the shortish things that we read. Let us know if you've got any thoughts on any of those, or especially if you end up following any of the links and checking out any of the uh, shorter works. Thank you for watching. We'll see you again soon.